I am in La Linea, Spain. This is Gibraltar just uh, behind me. This is Katana 50 Ocean Class and we're going to sail it to Canary Island. The boat looks uh, really well and I like the shape. I like a lot the dagger boards because they're going to give us a very good upwind performance and also a better downwind performance because you can just you know pull them out like a normal cruising boat would just have a fixed keel under which is not good for upwind either downwind i really like a lot the bows because they're kind of inverted they have this super sporty shape boat is a uh, very easy to walk around it's very wide and because there's no windows you see this is like there's no hatches for the rooms uh, there's less to bank but that also means less air in the cabins i like a lot this uh, front area because the net is kind of in the same level as the floor, it's a little bit lower. Because many boats, like you can see on the leo part, there would be a big step. So this is like way easier to go and less chances uh, to bank. Now I like a lot this design forward. You can see this is like massive. This just looks like it's built for sailing. I love this support for the uh, big Jenna we have. Actually a Jenna Curve Code Zero. It's just massive. It just looks like the boat wants to sail. And also the shape from here. You would say like it's a small cabin, but there's actually quite a lot of space inside. But you can see that they wanted to reduce the weight. So this boat is way lighter than like, uh, you know, Leopard 50 and has more uh, sail area towards the weight. So it should be way faster. So very easy to walk. I like these steps, some boats, they're just hard to get on the roof, but this is, uh, it's pretty good. And we have a dagger board, so they're operated with a button, they go in and out. And the helm station. So I like this detail that you can just lean on, you know, the person who's doing the ropes here. You can kind of lean it soft, you know, so you can like work with the ropes. This is pretty good. And just, uh, you know, this sitting area, it's just a classic sport top, like a leopard or lagoons would have. It actually feels quite fine good, but let's sail it first. So the differences between this boat and the Leopard, you can see this has the old system with two ropes, a little bit harder to use. Now the Leopard has this great system and everything just goes up and down with the dinghy, super easy to use. And then you can see the Leopard has on the top this sitting area, which is just great. Now, see, we just have solar panels. It's just to make it the boat uh, lighter. Now also in the front, uh, we have just, uh, see, like a clean space where the Leopard will have this forward sitting area with a roof, which I really love. I just love this front area. Uh, now you can see the big step it has to the net. So I would say like the front area regarding the net, uh, it's actually probably more useful than Leopard. But then again, I love that forward, you know, sitting area. Now the saloon looks kind of small from outside. But because there is no outer area, like, you know, most of the other cruising catamaran, like a Leopard, from here, this is all outer area, and then there's a big saloon. But we only have a very small space outside and a big space inside. So basically, when you open these doors, we just slide all the way there. There's a very big saloon. We have a great storage area here. So it's like a huge window. So you can see the boat was meant, you know, for some uh, kind of racing style. And there's a huge, huge storage and we have more sails here. And this is really cool, you know, because if you want to have good sails and it's a big opening, so you can actually, you know, work with the sails. So this is like a very racing approach and I like it a lot. And then we have a couple more openings here. So this is a generator. Uh, nothing special, just like most of the boats would have. Always close this because people just leave it like this and people crash their toes. And also, see if it's like this, it's not locked. And if both are unlocked, then you can open in the big waves. Now we have a life raft here and a chain well. And I like this because you can actually see the chain, see what's going on. You can access it because many boats, they just have a chain well hidden down there somewhere. Everything gets stuck. Uh, not easy to access, but uh, this is uh, good. There's another small storage here. So very small storage, it's actually not that small. It's pretty cool. 
Well, the boat does have an option for self-tacking, which I don't like. Uh, but luckily this one has just a normal, uh, see, like a normal Genoa. And then the one in front, they call it Gen Acre. We'll see when we open it. But I really like how it uh, has this good furling system. See, it's a furling system that just, uh, you know, it goes just like the Genoa. So this should be uh, pretty easy to use. And this boat is equipped with two Janmars 80 horsepower. That's a lot, I know. That's what uh, a Leopard 50 would have, which is a much heavier boat. But I guess there's never uh, too much power. So the engine room is pretty easy to access, uh, pretty easy to work on. And you can see again, like the rudders in the back. And then the engine has the gearbox forward, so the propeller is, is there. Because many boats, they just put the rudders here, like the Lagoon. And then the propell propeller is all the way in the back, it just doesn't work. So this should be a way more responsive boat. Uh, like a Nautitech has the same thing. And I like this. Also the propeller goes deeper, so less chances to wrap something, like the lines floating. And the more backwards the rudder is, the more responsive the boat will be. So you don't want to have a rudder here because it just has a way better effect if it's uh, down there. There's another cool storage area here. It actually works pretty well. Many times you have problems with these cushions and opening. It's pretty uh, well designed. The saloon area is actually pretty good and I do like this sitting area. Uh, it's very like, uh, it's comfortable. You see, and it's very bright because you can open all these windows. So I actually feel kind of uh, good here. And you can also rest here. And also when underway, so you can close most of these windows, but keep a little bit of this one open and then you can communicate to the guy on the watch so he can call you or see you're like in a good contact. But this person here is sheltered from uh, the elements. So we have uh, two freezers here. We have a very good fridge here. I like these big fridges. And this is like just a normal fridge, thumbs up, and a great way to lock them. Now, the galley, it's actually, it looks pretty cool. Uh, enough space, a very cool uh, navigation area. And then another space for sitting, which is again, it feels very bright here. And again, you can lay down here so you can rest. I just feel kind of good on this boat. You see, there's nothing I hit. It's kind of, it just kind of, it seems uh, oh, well designed. Uh, then we have these windows so which open forward, but they don't open them much So this will need probably improvement because you see that's all they do Which is great if it's raining or splashing, but you see it gives very little wind I would just prefer to open it all the way, but then yeah, you can get a wave inside So uh, if this was my boat, I would just see make something that I can open more get more breeze this boat, this is an owner version, which means there is one very big cabin and we have two cabins on this side. So let's go down. So let's go backwards first. So one of the things is you'll notice they are kind of smaller maybe than I'm used to on this size boat. Uh, so the two persons are going to be kind of squeezing. I mean the bed is big enough, but it's just like the overall volume. Uh, you can just, it's a little bit smaller than you would expect on the 50 footer. But it does the job because you got this boat because you want to sail better, not to, you know, live more comfortably. Then you take a Leopard 50. It's a little bit messy, a lot of stuff because there's nowhere to put it. But anyway, I like the two small windows. I'm missing a big window on the top because this boat just doesn't have them. So I'm not sure. I mean, you get less air, but I guess uh, that's how it is. Now I do like, so we have one doors here and one here. So this is a toilet, and this is actually a very uh, big toilet. I kind of, I kind of like it. Small sink, so it's a big volume, and we have a shower in the next one, and it's a, you know, a very like decent place. It's like, uh, I would say, you know, it's big, it's comfortable, but you share it with the front room. So like most of the new charter catamarans, they will have cabin shower and toilet and another shower and toilet here for the front cabin but here uh, there's just uh, shared now here you can notice that this is way slimmer boat narrower than the other cruising catamarans would, would be because of course it's a performance boat now there's another bank bed that comes down 
And this place here, it actually feels big, quite a big volume. It's just narrow. But otherwise it seems like a pretty decent uh, cabin. But this is definitely not, it's just one person here, one person there. Again, you do have a small window here. Nothing here, nothing on the top. So I'm not sure how you ventilate this. Uh, uh, I mean, we do have a fan here. But uh, like, yeah, well, it's a performance boat. So now going to the other side. This is the owner's cabin. And this one is actually pretty nice. So there is, a, see, a lot of space, like a nice bed, but a much bigger volume and has a very nice bathroom uh, forward. Okay, this feels very nice. So it has a separate toilet. We have a shower here. Okay. So this just feels good. This is, this is big enough, it's very decent. And also when you're moving around here, this is, uh, it's a big volume, it's very nice. But then again, I would feel more like on a 42 footer uh, let's say a Lagoon 42, then on the 50 footer, because this is the performance catamaran. I like this seat. Seems like it's kind of suspended. This is good, so when you're going big waves, it's gonna be more comfortable. We're in Gibraltar, we're getting uh, cheap fuel. It, it used to be way cheaper, now it's 0 0.9. I remember times when it was 0 0.5. And you just wanna go very slowly. If you go too quickly, you know, like all the speed, the vents are usually bad on these boats and everything overspills. Uh, the other trick is you can just listen and you are gonna hear the difference in the sound when it's getting full. Unfortunately, this is a very loud uh, pump, but you can hear from here. Up there, this is the rock of Gibraltar. And this is this ocean marina. And this is a floating hotel. So it's basically uh, a ship, but it's all the time here and it's a hotel. It's a pretty uh, smart idea. We are leaving the rock of Gibraltar and actually I kind of like because there was no problems with the fuel. So the air, sometimes, uh, you know, some boat just goes out, the vents are bad, but uh, this was pretty easy. So now we are exiting this big bay. Uh, this is Spain, this is Gibraltar. And then our worry now is orcas. So we're now 100% thinking about the orcas, what to do. We actually have some sand here in case, uh, you know, we can just throw it in the water. Apparently it helps. And uh, we're going to cross uh, to Morocco and then just follow the Moroccan coast. And we have to be out of the Morocco by night because uh, they say it's illegal to sail near Morocco when it's dark. So this is all the big boats anchored here waiting to get the fuel, give fuel. So this is uh, basically, you can see the small boats, they bring the fuel to the big boats. So when you come to refill in Gibraltar, you don't dock. But the big boats just anchor and then you see there's now a small boat and the big one and that's how they transfer uh, fuel. So right now we are just on the single engine and we are 2000 RPM just uh, for the speed. And we're doing 5.5 knots so just one engine 2100 RPM doing five and a half uh, knots. We are very lucky on this trip because look at this. Sandwiches, chips, the kitchen is open. Oh, we have a melon. This is going to be a healthy... Oh no, we have some chocolates. Okay, I guess this is they put for me. So we are in here. This is our boat and you can see a lot of other boats around us. So this is Gibraltar, this would be a Spain. So let's zoom out. And now uh, this is Europe and this is Africa. And this is Strait of Gibraltar. Now the orcas are mostly around here. It's like, and it's uh, near Barbata is the worst. So you want to avoid this area. So people now go close to a shore, uh, but we don't want to go all the way up here and then turn towards Canary Islands. So we're going to cross here to Morocco and then follow the Moroccan coast and then get out. So the orcas are here. So that's how we want to avoid them. And then we're going to sail down to Canary Islands, which are down here. So again, Europe, Africa, we're here. And we're going to sail uh, to Gran Canaria. And the distance is, so this is uh, 
we have 717 nautical miles so it's going to take us five to six days this looks like a luxury uh, sailing trip so let me take one of these before we're gonna be all out looking for the orcas so that's another thing you want to do is so when you're uh, watching for the orcas i mean you have to watch because you know you want to see them before they hit so you can do any measurements so that's why like in half an hour everybody's gonna be sitting out and just watching so if we see them that we just go away start putting sand or whatever we're gonna do so we are now opening uh, the genoa because we're gonna use the sails to go directly to Morocco. So now the orcas are like there. They've seen them today, they're in between some there. So now we're just gonna full speed across to Morocco and then follow the coast of the Morocco. Uh, but because we have these winds coming through the Gibraltar Strait, we can use this sail. Oh, that's a nice black sail. We're gonna use this and the engines just to get the full speed across the separation line. Now, this is the separation line because all the big boats are going in and out from the Mediterranean, so this is busy. So now we have to keep an eye on them. We have to cross it 90 degrees with full speed. And yeah, hopefully we don't get hit by one of these. So let's see. Uh, there's one big one coming, uh, but we'll be fine. We have AIS system. So now we have a Genoa. We have two engines on, we're just full speed, we're 2600. Uh, there could be some uh, currents, but our speed is pretty good. So one of the theories is also that if you go above eight knots, they don't attack uh, the fast boats. So now the orcas are down there and we just have to go around them. And we have to cross this separation line. And just look at the mountains. I just love seeing the Morocco, Africa. It's such a nice coastline. Full engines. So now with the AIS system, see now we're crossing the strait. So we have around, that would be so we have six miles to cross, so we're going to be across in 45 minutes. Now we have to watch for the big ships. The good thing is you can press on the ship and you can get the CPA, so the closest position. So this one is already passed, but let's check, let's check, let's say this one. So now it says the closest is going to be two miles in 25 minutes, so we're safe. So basically very clearly here we can see if we are going to hit any boat or not. So it just seems like we're clean. It just seems like not much traffic today, so we just have to cross and hope for the best. We're making a big wave here, so I think, I don't think Orca will like this, so the rudder is here. It just doesn't seem fun to be in this wave. Uh, good turbulence, but you know, I don't know. That's the theory. So Strait of Gibraltar, The Rock, Spain, Africa, and luckily not much traffic today, like hardly any ships. I just hope it's not because of the orcas, nobody wants to go today. But uh, we'll be fine. There's a big group of dolphins and we just get our pants shitted. But it's dolphins. Okay, there's more dolphins. It's like you're in a forest looking for a bear and the deer jumps out. That was a big group of dolphins passing, like very big dolphins. Very big dolphins. And there's more dolphins. Okay, you can see, definitely a dolphin, not an orca. That was scary. We're almost across. Uh, we're getting close to the Morocco. And I've never been so close, but just look at those mountains. It's just, you just want to climb them. It's such a nice coast. And it's so close. Basically, this is Strait of Gibraltar, so we have Spain, there's a Tarifa, and this is Africa. Just look, it's so close together. You're, you're across in less than one hour with our boat, so with a fast boat, you need 15 minutes to get across. It's spectacular. And luckily, no orcas, 
those dolphins scared us a little bit, but we're keeping an eye. Everything looking good. So the hot spot is down there, but looking good. So we're just sailing and it looked like oranges, but actually it's a net and this is the end of the net. And it seems like it's a floating net. So it's good we noticed because it just goes all the way around the net. It has this yellow buoys. It's just like oranges. You can see one. So I'm not sure if it was, uh, I mean, it seems like it was floating one. Anyway, we saw it. This seems like to be the end. So we're going to go now around. Uh, we're getting really close. There's another sailboat also staying close to the land, avoiding orcas. But just look at this. Uh, I love it. It's so beautiful. Look at this mountain. You just want to climb. Look at those cliffs and there's like a perfect beach there. I mean, I want to visit Morocco. Always, always wanted, but now I'm like, just look at this. This is beautiful. We just got contacted on uh, VHF by the vessel traffic control uh, from this port. And they just said, uh, proceed north. Actually, north is there. So we were going kind of too close, I guess. And now we just go a little bit more. Actually, we're going more like west because uh, we don't want to go north to the orcas. But uh, we got contacted, but they were kind of friendly. They said we're entering their uh, waters uh, from the port, port waters. There's a lot of ferries going across. One, two. So they just don't want us to be here. This is Europe. So we crossed far down went close to that port and they were they throwed us up north two times so they don't want you around the port but now nobody is annoying us and we're actually right there there's a beach like i could i could actually swim to the beach yeah it's pretty close so no orcas uh, so far and they should be out there so down there is uh tarifa so they've seen them in between here today and uh, we're pretty good now so staying close is fine so we were a little bit worried is like there is this innocent passage so you can just pass you know if you're not stopping but then you're worried you know like if coast guard would uh, wouldn't like you to come so close but nobody is complaining so far and we have ais on so they can see our position and i think it's better to have it on so they can see you so you're not hiding like somebody might turn it off and then they would see you in a radar and think you know who are you you know Anyway, you can see a beautiful beaches down there and this Moroccan coast. It's great. So you can see we're really close. And lucky with the weather and the current. So we started from here. We crossed here and this is where the port is. And right now we're here. So let's zoom a little bit in. So this is Strait of Gibraltar. So they gave us a little bit of trouble around here. It's uh, Port Tangier. But now we're really like, we're like really in the Morocco. See, we're like, uh, see, we're like, we're there. The coast is right here. We are like 500 meters away. This is half a mile uh, and closer. We're really close and we're just going to follow. And then once we get out here, uh, this is safe. And actually now in the Navionics, uh, you see this area. This is actually an Orca area. So actually now with the updates, um, it's in here. So you want to uh, you don't want to be here and actually you should be restricted area. So it says area with high probability of the presence of orcas. So uh, it's quite of cool. So you just want to avoid uh, all this. This Morocco coastline is just beautiful. Look at these beaches and then there's some rocks. I mean, this is really, really nice. We are very close. This is like quarter of a mile. This is really close. The closer we are, the better for the orcas. We were just afraid that the authorities might not like, but uh, we're fine for now. Oh, I want to visit Morocco. This is beautiful. Just look at this place. Wow. It's fantastic. Just a beautiful landscape. It's just, it's just fantastic. There's some fishermen's shallow waters and now orcas. Uh, it's a nice fishing boat. And actually, 
This is the Morocco. And this is the end. This is the Atlantic Ocean in front of us. Uh, the freedom is out there. So this is where the Morocco turns 90 degrees and goes down south. So this is the peninsula. And uh, we're going to go south, so no more orcas. Orcas north. And in a couple hours we're going to be all the way out of orca zone. And then we can relax a little bit. So lucky this time. We are still just under one engine. We have 2200 RPM. We have a speed of four and a half knots because it seems like we have some current against us. And this is the map. See, so this is where the Morocco turns south. It just looks like this. So we came across from Gibraltar and they followed the Morocco coast. You can actually see this is our line. You see the purple one. This is how we went. And then the Morocco just turns down. And then we're gonna sail towards Canary Islands, which are here. But we do want to get away from the shore because along the Morocco coast there's quite a lot of nets. Another Morocco fishing boat catching on us. I like these boats, they're kind of, you see, blue, red, they have this nice African shape. It's nice here. I'm gonna be back to Morocco. There's a beautiful lighthouse up there. And this is the, this is it. This is marking the end of the Morocco. And then the Morocco just turns south. And we're gonna go west towards the sunset. We're actually sailing into the sunset. The same fishing boat is still catching with us. Now he's getting a little bit closer. And this is the end of the Morocco. I mean the end of Morocco. Just It just turns down. See, this is it. This is the lighthouse. There's a tower with a radar controlling everything. And then it just turns down. So we're now, let's say, well, I would say we're in the Atlantic Ocean. This is like officially Atlantic Ocean. So Gibraltar Strait, Mediterranean. And it's very calm. You can see these long waves. You probably don't see them. We actually have around a meter and a half to two meter waves, but they're super long. Kind of hard to see them. So far, I, I kind of like this boat and I kind of like the motion. And we went up a chop a little bit, so it was a little bit of chop. And it seems like these holes are just going through because there's not much volume. So the boat is not bounced up and down. And because the engines are relatively moved forward as much as possible, and all the fuel tanks and the stuff is in the middle of the boat uh, then the boat is not doing you know this like some cruising catamarans have it's actually going very nicely it just feels uh, kind of like it so far and we're finally sailing we just turned the engines off look at this cool sails there's actually not much wind uh, but we're gonna make this boat fly right now Five. Two. So how much wind do we have? We have. 5.2. There's only five knots. That's a true or a parent? That's a parent. That's true. Uh, oh, so we have five knots of true wind speed. Yes. <laughs> and we are going sharp upwind. So our angle is 40. 40, 40 apparent wind. So for the nerds, the apparent wind angle is 40. There's not much wind, but it's better than the engine. Oh, so we put this reverse. And, and this is the coolest thing. On. Press the button. And dagger boards go in. That's fancy. Oh, this is so cool. This is like... Oh. This is the coolest thing on this boat. Just look at this. Wow. Wow. Oh, I love this. Oh. So we're going to set the sail. We have to pull the main halyard more. Because here you have this... Uh, the formation of the sail, so we need to tension this more. And I mean, there's really not much wind. It's basically no wind. Uh, but we are, uh, I mean, we're moving. Not much, but we're moving. So this guy looks from the back. We're actually moving. There's no wind, but the boat is. And now the main is released. We're gonna make this right now. Keep an eye on that. Okay, he's gonna go. So now for the gigs, so we have apparent wind speed uh, 10 knots and we have true wind speed 7 knots. 
Now the speed you're reading on the screen is speed or ground 3.2, but that's not correct because we have a lot of current, so actually our speed through water is around 4 knots. Uh, yeah, that jumps off. Yeah, we're doing around 4 knots average, which means we have around 1 knot of uh, current. So the number you're reading down in the corner is speed or ground, so we're actually 1 knot uh, faster. And it actually feels like, I mean, we're sailing. Yeah. There's like six and a half knots of seven, six and a half to seven knots of true in speed. And a normal cruising catamaran would go reverse now. <laughs> but we're actually going four knots. So, I mean, this is a, this is way better than a cruising catamaran. We're still not flying and we're sailing upwind. So. We're going upwind and that's why we're also slower. But it's not bad, it's not bad. It feels uh, like sailing, but we need more wind. We're sailing into the sunset and now we have both uh, dagger boards down and it seems to improve the VMG, that's the velocity made good. And also the difference between two lines, so the black one is heading and the blue one is speed over ground. It's And in between it means just how much you're going sideways because when you sail upwind, the wind is also pushing you sideways and that's why you have these dagger boards which prevent this. Now the normal cruising catamarans without dagger boards just have a kill and it's much less efficient so this angle would be way bigger and uh, now with two dagger boards so if you put just one it was worse with two it's better but then I guess the faster you go then you can probably just have uh, just one. So now this is still just speed over ground so uh, let's see the real speed of through the water. Uh, so we're doing like 4.6, 4, 4, 5 knots. We're doing around 4.5 to 5 knots. So this number on the screen is not accurate. I mean, it's accurate. It's speed or ground, but this is the current. It's pushing us back. And we're sailing just out on the open ocean. We're sailing actually kind of almost away from the Canary Islands because we just want to get out uh, to get uh, the good winds. So we stopped reading the speed through water so we had to pull out the transducer. So we had to pull this guy out and then there's a plug, every boat has a plug so that now there's a, see this guy? This is a plug. So you do get a little bit of water so you have to clean this wheel that it turns nicely and get stuck and then you get speed through water and then you can know what the current is and you back, you get back your true wind speed because that's how it's calculated. This is how it looks behind. I mean, we're moving. It actually feels kind of nice to be sailing. And uh, we have a great dinner. So this is what our chefs made. This is so tortillas good. baked with and salad. Oh, this is so good. Well, I'm gonna like log out and uh, wind has stopped, so we furled the sails. We're gonna drop down the main, but before we drop the main, we're just watching this beautiful sunset. Just look at this beautiful. It's the middle of the night, and we're just progressing under the engine because we only have uh, one actually two knots of true in speed so basically here we are just sailing out let's zoom out so slowly going towards canary islands but then tomorrow we should reach these winds because usually there's this uh, azora islands and there's an anticyclone and anyway, it's gonna give us good winds all the way down the canaries so just like tomorrow we're gonna get good winds and then just sail but now we're under a single engine uh, we have uh, 2000 rpm one engine and we're doing 5.87 knots uh, it's pretty calm sea there's a little bit of waves but we're bouncing a little bit but it's just fine so let's just zoom back in so this is where I'm now watching the AIS targets so these are the targets of the other boats so we can see them here and then you can just press and then you can see uh, the CPA so this one is gonna pass minimum six miles away and that's going to happen in 11 minutes and their speed is 15 knots and this is the radar we have AIS targets here also and the reflection so basically this is the reflection of this AIS target 
and you can put the range so now it's on two four six miles but then you can set it so I'm zooming out or zoom in uh, just to have you know like uh, more accurate for closer anyway we're doing really well second day morning not much going on uh, we have a little bit of swell from some winds far north and we're just under single engine 2000 rpm just going straight for the canary islands so that we go here so we have another 580 nautical miles left with this speed it would be four days and 16 hours but we are gonna get winds from here so here there are winds so we just need to get a little bit closer and then we're gonna have uh, good winds in the next days there's one ship far away but otherwise uh, not much traffic we haven't met many boats there was just one fisherman during the night and actually it's getting uh, very nice The boat seems to be quite nicely balanced, as I've mentioned. It just has uh, the motion of the boat is uh, it's nice. We're moving quite a lot now because uh, we have this swell, but it's kind of uh, no complaints. It's fine. Second day, twelve o'clock. We have full sails, but let's see for the nerds first. So we have six to seven knots of true wind speed. Uh, we have uh, 10 knots of apparent wind speed and we are doing 6.5 it's not bad apparent wind angle 45 so we're like still very close to the Morocco but now we caught these winds and I think we're just gonna sail no engines all the way to Canary Islands and we're just gonna get more winds and just getting faster and faster and probably open the big sails and it actually feels uh, it feels like sailing like you can notice that this boat has uh, less weight and more sails towards the usual uh, cruising catamarans and actually it feels uh, it feels solid so we have a nice main a Genoa right now and I like the movement of the boat it's just kind of uh, it's a little bit choppy not too bad but it feels like a well-balanced boat I like these bows they're just cutting through the water it's just nice to watch them let's see this one they're just kind of skinny sharp edged bows inverted yeah it uh, actually feels uh, it feels quite solid it's good uh, let's see how it looks behind this is one of the best views to see what the boat is doing behind yeah we're not dragging much water not making any waves so it's a pretty good hull shape and this is the leeward so this usually makes uh, more pressure so we get more wave and it's pretty good I mean we're still relatively slow but it does seems like a fishing hull Not sure you can see on the camera, but you see there's like it's like a two meter swell. And now as we have all the sails up, the boat feels uh, very stable. Before we were just in the engine, we were kind of bouncing. It wasn't that much fun, but now it's uh, it's pretty good. It's nice to have a very low boom because then you can have a lower mast and the center of the pressure on the sail is low and it just, uh, it's just way better if you have a big cruising catamaran with a high fly bridge then the boom would be all the way up there and then everything is just you know when the waves are rocking the boat everything is just moving more so uh, here it actually feels uh, very good it feels good the, uh... so we have now seven knots of true in speed apparent twin angle 47 an apparent wind speed around 10 knots and you see we're doing like 5.7 and this is the difference uh, between the normal cruising catamaran right now 
you wouldn't be really sailing, you would be just struggling. Uh, but we are already sailing because this boat has so much sail area towards the weight uh, And it does make a difference. It does make with a normal cruising catamaran We would be still using an engine if you want to have some speed or just be miserably slow uh, But this actually feels like sailing. It's uh, it feels good it feels like sailing the winds are slowly turning like this, so we're now one hour later. So we have apparent wind angle around, let's say around 70, and true wind speed 7.4. Now the apparent wind speed is actually very low, it's like 7. But we're still doing a pretty good speed. We're doing 5.2 knots. I mean, we just have 6, 7 knots of true wind speed, of apparent wind speed. And the true wind is 7, we're doing now 5.2. That's uh, it's not bad. Now we could already have a bigger sail now, like a very flat code 0. Because this is uh, just a small geno for this angle. But we're kind of uh, sailing, it's not bad. I mean, you can notice the difference. You can say this is a performance catamaran towards the normal cruising catamaran. You definitely can feel a, a difference. We just picked up some speed because we have the big guy up there. This is kind of a Jenneker. It has a firm uh, front edge and it's furling. And uh, I can feel the difference in the power. This is a cool sail. I just love this sail. So we increased our speed quite a lot now. Uh, but let's see the numbers for the nerds. So true wind speed, 8 knots, apparent wind angle, you know, like 55, 60. It's quite impressive that we can sail this sail so sharp upwind. It's not very flat sail, maybe we're pushing it a little bit too much now. Uh, but it's kind of working, you see. Like, and we're doing like 6.4 knots. Uh, so for the apparent wind speed we have around, uh, it's really moving, so around let's say 10, 9 to 10 knots of apparent wind speed. True in speed, 8 knots, doing 6.6. .6. It's, uh, it's pretty solid for, uh, you know, like a comfortable catamaran. And definitely it feels like sailing. So right now I wouldn't want to be on any cruising catamaran. Because this actually feels like sailing right now. And uh, we're not making any dr too much drag or any wave. So it seems like a good uh, shape still in that speed. I'm not sure I like the black color of the sail, it's very hard to see the shape. It probably just looks better from far away, uh, but I would prefer white sails. I like this Janneker. This net is super comfortable. I really like the front area. And as I've said, it's like very smooth, you know, clean, no step. And it's a very good net, it's very firm, comfortable, great for sleeping. So this Janneker just goes all the way down to the here. And then, yeah, we're pushing it a little bit too much. Uh, it's not the flattest sail I've seen, so it's still like quite fatty, but we're going like 60 apparent wind angle. That's impressive. So we are only using one sheet and that's for the reason because you have another one you see it just in a way and when you're gonna you know jibe you'll have to furl this sail anyway so we'll just furl it and then open it on the other side and put this line on the other side in between. It's just like way cleaner on the deck less problem it works really well. We have now set uh, wind autopilot to 70 degrees apparent. And now the sail is, you see, way more stable. We're pushing it too much earlier. And also we have a much uh, better speed now. So we're doing now 7 knots. And there's only 9 knots of true in speed. And we're doing 7. I mean, that's impressive. And the apparent wind speed... Wow, this is low, it's like 8 to 9 knots, true in speed 9. And we're doing 6.6 .6 up to 7 knots, this is impressive. 
I think the wind autopilot just messed it a little bit. Uh, but yeah, we're actually uh, we're actually sailing very nice. Yeah, I like these performance catamarans. And no annoying drag behind. You see, it's so smooth. See, there's no wave. It's pretty cool. The wind is picking up, but as you can see, there's no white caps. So it's like, I would say this is really low wind. And I only had fun when you sail in a hobby cat in these conditions. So now it picked up a little bit. So we have now 10 knots of uh, true wind speed. And we have 9 knots, 10 knots of apparent wind speed. Still at the angle of 70 apparent wind angle because we have a wind wane. So wind autopilot. And we're doing 7.5 knots just constantly. The boat is uh, sailing, just has a constant speed. Moving, uh, I mean it's moving really nicely. It's a very pleasant movement, just feels solid. Nothing is squeaking or banging. The sails look good. We're not dragging much uh, water behind. Like a little bit here, but you won't see that wave that some boats produce. Let's see this side, this one always makes more, more pressure on this hull. Yeah, we're going nicely. That's a nice sail, just look at it. Nice, deep sail. And we're sailing 70 degrees apparent wind angle. That's impressive, that's very nice. Very nice. We're doing 8.4 knots now. Apparent wind angle around 170. Apparent wind speed 11 and true wind speed 11. So, see the winds are kind of from the side and this is, you know, it's good for the speed. And we're doing eight knots. And so when you're talking, this is not a racing catamaran, it's performance. Which means it's just gonna sail way better at low winds and generally than a cruising catamaran. Now, the funny thing is that, you see, there's a nine electric winches on this boat. So there's even a winch that pops out and you use it for the mooring lines to tension them, which uh, just sounds kind of ridiculous because it's a performance catamaran. I like a lot these cleats. So, you know, when you have a buoy and you put a rope through here to the cleat so it doesn't go around, uh, you know, around the hall and squeaks, like this is so smart, like this is so good. And I love the cleat having forward because most of catamarans have the cleats there and I like it here, it's way better, I think. So we're sailing just beautifully with everything and uh, the good thing is you still have a lot of comfort. So let's see what uh, people are doing, you know. Uh, we're like on eight knots, the boat is going very nicely. We even have a very performance uh, dinghy. This is a high performance dinghy, underwater lights, it has one, two, three, four speakers and it weighs 200 kilograms, 250 kilograms. It just doesn't make sense to have it on a performance catamaran, right? But it's not a racing catamaran, but still I think this should be lighter. And as you're sailing at that night, you can just prepare fishing hooks, you can cook. You see, this is so comfortable in here. Today we're gonna have a potato salad. So this is the difference between the performance, racing, and cruising catamaran. So the performance catamaran still gives you a lot of comfort, but you still have the performance, so you can actually sail it, because the cruising catamarans just don't sail when there's low winds. Now the racing, that's a different story. And definitely the coolest gadget on this boat are these dagger boards. See here, just press the button, they go down, or you press the button, they go up. This is so, so cool. I could just press this button all day long and go up and down. It's so much fun. And they do make a difference, you know? Uh, they do give performance upwind. And when you go downwind, you just lift them up 
and you have less drag and uh, you just go more you're more drifting you know with the wind so you're gonna get there faster so we have a bunch of winches here this one two this is three four then we have a winch there and there's another one on the other side and then uh, so this is one two three four five six winch number seven is here for the dinghy uh, and this is the other one on this side and then we have two winches in front so we have nine electric winches now uh, that's not a racing boat but that's a performance boat so having a cockpit like this is actually kind of cool because you see let's say you're racing so one person can be here and then another person can be there you know doing the ropes now the thing is I could be sitting here and the second person is doing these winches. I'm just confused, you know, because I love the cockpit of the Lagoon 42. It just for, you know, one person can do everything. Of course, if you're racing, you want to have another person being able to do something. But I'm just confused because, you see, you can do something but then not. So I'm just not sure, like, I like it or don't like it. Maybe I would just need to get used to it, you know. Definitely one person can be here doing the ropes, you're racing. But hey, you cannot do these winches. Now, if this person is sailing the boat, well, then maybe you can be sailing from here and then the third person is there. But how does that person quickly go out? I'm just a little bit confused. Probably just need to get used to it. Position of these throttles, it's good and it's not good. One of the not good thing is whenever somebody comes here, everybody's like, oh, great. oh, let's grab here and let's pull it out, let's break it, you see? So it would be smart maybe to have kind of a, I don't know, now people just grab it when they're walking around. Uh, the good thing is when you're here, you can see, you know, when docking the boat, you can see both bows. And then from here, if you put your head down, you can see the back of the boat and you see a uh, back of the boat here. So this boat should be pretty easy to dock. And again, you're here. So if you're single-handed, you can maneuver the boat and very quickly go there and pass um, the rope. So the problem with a flybridge boat, if you're up there, you don't see anything what's going behind. And then by the time you get off the flybridge and pass the rope, it can be you know, too long if you're single-handed. Winds are picking up. So we have 30 knots of true speed. 11 apparent, 8.4 knots, that's a pretty decent speed, 9 knots. And you know what, I don't really feel these knots, the boat is going really smoothly, uh, like it just seems like a compact boat, nothing is squeaking, nothing is you know, like making any stupid noises, and it's pretty nice behind. It's going really nice. Now we have also attached the dinghy with a painter here because they just always tend to move left and right. And then when you have the inox directly on the, on the, on the PVC, it just, you know, gives these marks, very ugly marks, very hard to clean. So we just put this line here and it's preventing the sideways movements. It's so beautiful. We're just flying to work on Aries. It feels good on this boat. Just look at this sail. It's giving us so much power. It's really good. And we still have all the comfort on the boat. You see in here, it's so quiet. People even don't know they're doing nine knots. See, they're just preparing a salad, tomatoes. Just, you know, wandering around. We have loads of fridges, television, a big fridge. I mean, you don't even know you're doing nine knots. It's just so comfortable in here. And it's a quiet boat. But let's go down and let's see if there's any noises uh, in the cabins. Ah, this is pretty quiet. I'll keep my mouth shut. Well, this is really quiet if you ask me, but let's go forward. Let's see how it sounds in here. I 
mean, I can hear only, I can hear only water. Yeah, no stupid noises of like, with furniture or anything. This is good. Feels solid and quiet. Well, that's, that's a good thing. And then sitting in here right now, it's pleasant. You see, the motion of the boat, we're just now stable. It's not bouncing. We're just like on the tracks. And you can just sit here, watch forward. So you have a very good visibility, so you can just keep a, a watch from here. And I do like this chair. It's kind of suspended and uh, it's, you know, so it's kind of a cool chair. So when you're sitting here, it is suspended, yeah. It's pretty cool. So you can have your uh, navigation here. So we're still doing 8.6 knots. Apparent wind speed 11.6. We're going towards Canary Islands, so we're going down here. We still have 548 miles uh, left, and he's saying with this speed it's going to be just two days and 15 hours. So we're really flying now, and I like this AIS system, so you can see there's not many boats around us, not even on AIS. And this boat, yeah, big boat is doing 17 knots. And yeah, you can just sit here. You can watch around. The good thing is that the chair turns. You see, so you can just like, you know, turn around. You can just sit here. It's relatively comfortable. And just keep a watch from here. And you have everything here. See, so you have a good view. And you're getting a lot of air. Actually, the window, we just keep it open. Although you have to be careful, but there's no spraying. You see, it's just, uh, it's fine. Now we're going to catch a big fish. <laughs> okay, we caught a squid. Yeah. We caught something. <laughs> oh no, that's our lure. Uh, that's our lure. Uh, yeah, that's an interesting system. Just to... Let's see how this is going to work. So we don't have a, a rod. Oh, that's a good system. Let's see if it uh, falls right off the end. <laughs> oh, it's just going to make a bang. This area is also, uh, like, it's very comfortable, you know. Now we're sailing. And I'm getting a plenty of air here. I was not sure about this, but it's actually, it's super comfortable. And you can just, you know, lay down. It's wide enough. It's long enough. And you have this super nice view. So when I'm just sitting here, I have like super nice view. I could open these windows. Uh, now we have those windows on the side open, so we have a nice breeze. We could open everything behind. I kind of like, uh, I like this concept. If it's gonna be like the owner's bow, this is a good concept. Not sure for chartering, but uh, I kind of like it. This position here also seems to be a very good one. I kind of like it. It's, you know, wide enough. And there's this shade you can put. There's like this uh, shade if you want to have. And it feels just uh, nice here. I mean, you could have a nice snap. It's wide, it's long enough. Thumbs up, I like this. It's a good night. One of the things I'm always missing on the boat is forward looking seats. And actually from here, I can look forward. I mean, and I actually have a pretty good view as the boat is bouncing. I could actually take a watch from here. Or, you know, people can sit here and they're like watching forward because not many boats have option to sit and look forward. That's why I love Flybridge because people can be up on the top and look forward. But now as we have this sport top, you see, there can be only two person up there. And then where can be anybody else if it's spraying from the front? You can be sitting here and look backwards. But now this is just great because it's super comfortable and I can look forward. It's also good for the motion sickness. Not good for, good against the motion sickness. Wind is picking up more and more. So now we have 14 knots of throwing speed. And uh, 
they are the same apparent doing eight point doing nine knots so we're doing nine knots and you just don't feel these nine knots we're just gently cruising fishing cooking it's perfect our fishing gear is officially set so the bungee should take the bungee cord should take the pressure out when we catch a big uh, tuna and if it breaks there's a safety line and then we'll just bring it in somehow but we're getting really fast now so we're gonna catch a big fast tuna Sun's gonna set in a couple hours and we have oh we're just doing 10 knots wow see the wind actually just picked up a little bit so we're around 70 degrees apparent wind angle apparent wind speed 13 true wind speed 14 almost 15 and just doing constant speed so let's see what the sails think usually you know like this code zeros and stuff when it's 15 degrees apparent wind, you start thinking to maybe put them down. It's probably the same here, but we'll see. And yeah, the boat behind is still going very nicely. There's not much pulling of the wave. And this boat is not struggling at all. You see, like some other cruising catamarans, once they hit this uh, speed are just like shh, you know you can feel like they're struggling but this boat it just goes faster you know like you don't even notice you're going so quickly you just just slides just goes nicely thumbs up feels good nicely 9.5 we don't want to go like 15 is the max we want to go with these sails so we're like close to the max. See, just uh, averaging 9.3, just going smoothly. Sailing into the sunset. And the boat is not struggling at all. It just goes. We are making cookies. These are homemade cookies. How do they call them? Homemade cookies. And we actually have some here already made and they smell so well. That's why I woke up. But anyway, we have just put, uh, actually the previous shift, put the sails down, all the sails down, because we have very light winds, so we're now under engine and no sails. We have very light winds and we have a lot of swell, so the main sail was just banging crazy. So now we're waiting for the winds to pick up a little bit, and then we'll probably just open the Jenneker. So this is the conditions when the parasail is good, you know, it's just because it's going to stay, it's a very stable sail. But yeah, not the best right now. We are having 5.4 knots of apparent wind speed. It's not much. So there is actually 10 knots of true wind speed. So you know, six knots of apparent and straight from behind. So this is like, this is what the catamarans don't like. Now, we could go and see more like tick tack, but because there's so much swell, once you turn more sideways to the swell, it starts banging even more. So it's the kind of the conditions that these catamarans don't really like. But anyway, we have 427 nautical miles left. This is the day number three. And oh, actually looks now on the chart that we moved quite a bit. So we're gonna get, this guy says with this speed, three days. And I think once the wind picks up, we'll be there in two days. I just found this invention. I think it's super cool. I'll show you how to use it. And I'm just gonna press Ooh. And we have an apple. Bon appetit. I mean, it tastes the same like an apple. We are sailing again. This time we only have this furling Jenneker and no main uh, because we were just afraid it would bang. 
Uh, and we're doing a really good uh, progress. The uh, sail is stable and it's actually a very pleasant uh, sailing. We're still fishing, haven't caught anything. Well, but let's see now the numbers. So the true wind, uh, we just got the wind back, so now we have 14 knots of true wind speed. 10 to 11 of apparent and it's a really good angle so it's 110 degrees of uh, apparent wind angle. We, we could probably use the main now at this angle, at this wind, uh, but earlier the wind was more from behind so the main would probably bang a lot and the sea state was a little bit rougher. So that's why we decided to have a Janaker only and also to test how it works, you know, with the, just with the Janaker. So our speed is around 6.6, 6.7. So probably with the main we could go a little bit faster, but it's still a pretty uh, decent speed. We still have 390 nautical miles left. So we're kind of, you know, we could say like almost in the middle. We're actually very close to Morocco now, the closest we will get. So this is, uh, we are 40 nautical miles away from Morocco. Not much uh, traffic, just one ship. Here and there we see a ship. Because these catamarans, when they go downwind, these main sails, they're just banging, they're just in the way. It's so much fun to sail just with uh, front sails like this one. I just like the shape, the speed they give, how easy it's to, you know, use them maneuver for... The wind just picked up. Oh, okay, we're doing 8.6, 8.7. Apparent wind angle, 105. Apparent wind speed, 12. So definitely now we could have a, a main up. Now the thing is, to put the main up, we would have to furl this sail, turn upwind, put the main up, unfurl. Uh, we would probably do one knot more. But then if the wind shifts again, too much from behind, the main will start flapping again. So that's just the problem of ocean crossings, you know. You don't want to have this main up and down. Now if you have a furling main into the mast, it would be way easier, but just this maneuver, turning upwind and then downwind, it's just, it's really annoying. That's why many people cross oceans just with a parasail. And if the winds are not too strong, that's the only sail you put up and you put it off uh, when you get to Caribbean. 3rd night and we're doing really, really good speed. We're surfing down the waves up to 11 knots. So right now we have 18 knots of true wind speed, apparent 14 and 110 degrees of apparent wind angle. And we are just flying towards Canaries. So if we keep this speed, we're going to be there in one day and 10 hours. Okay, there's actually one sailboat very close to us. We have to keep an eye. It's a sailing vessel. Oh, they're doing like 13 knots. That's a fast boat. What is this? Look at this. This sailboat is doing 13 knots, so I thought we were overtaking, they are overtaking us. That's crazy, 13 knots, wow. Well, they're gonna beat us to Canary Island, so we are like here. We're still far away, but with this speed we're gonna be there very soon, we're just flying. We're still uh, just under the Jennaker and the waves have uh, developed very nicely so now we are uh, surfing them so still a Jennaker only it's pretty stable it's actually a beautiful night well let's see how it looks behind Well, the boat is going very, very nicely. Very nicely we're sailing. 
it's actually a super pleasant ride. You can just feel how this boat is not struggling. When it surf, it just goes. You don't even hear much the sea. You just glide. It's a really elegant, uh, elegant boat. Not struggling at all, just, just flying. Day number four. We're doing uh, quite a good progress. So during the night, we were under the Jenneker and we are still having this Jenneker and no main. So now we're getting closer to, you know, more and more close to Canary Islands. Uh, we have uh, 246 nautical miles left. And we have around 15 knots of true in speed, around 10 apparent. And we have speed over ground. It just goes up and down because we go up the wave and then we surf down. And then it stops. See, right now it was 9.2 goes down to six and then you surf so the average is probably around seven knots i would say parent wind angle 130. so we're just flying this uh, jenica it's pretty stable although we're going kind of uh, downwind which these sails are not really made for uh, but it's pretty stable so pretty happy with it It's maybe a little bit choppy, always hard to see on the camera, we're just jumping a little bit. Uh, you wouldn't want to go that direction. But otherwise, it's a nice day. Oh, this is the coolest thing, I've never seen this before. You see, it's like a hook, it has a roller. So when you pick up a Mediterranean mooring line, you can actually kind of walk it forward and it's just going to roll. This is a super cool invention. And you want, it's a great place to keep uh, vegetables because uh, crossing an ocean, in tropics especially, you want to have everything out so it's aired, otherwise it just get, you know, goes off, gets moldy. So this is a very good place to have it. We're fishing, we haven't caught anything. We're fishing every day. No luck. These are the best views. You can just watch this all day. How oh, the boat is surfing down the waves. Let's see, Jenneker. I just love the color. It's like make kind of a diffusion light. It's kind of white, but not white. See, it's super stable. So we have the dagger boards out all the way because we want to drift as much as sideways and also when the wave you know hits you if you have this out then kind of you know you just go with the wave kind of better we have the doors kind of closed now because we have just haven't opened them yet since uh, the night so this is how it looks when you close them. So now the side windows are closed. There's another side window. So we can totally remove this. And the good thing is that actually you totally slide it in there. So it all the way open. Not just this part, but it opens all the way. And the same on the other side. And it's super bright, you know, just like when I'm sitting right here, I feel no wind, there's enough air. It's actually, it's not bad. It's pretty cool uh, uh, design having it like this. It's very bright. You, you don't feel claustrophobic. You feel like it's good. It's pretty good. And you have a nice view. You're warm and dry. I like this chair more and more. It's really cool. It's just like big, firm. You can relax like this. And you can see forward. And then you can just go into the resting mode. Just with one click. And it's great, it's wide, it's, I love it. I love it. You can put a shade over. Uh, we put it away, actually it's here. So it's very easy, you just put two rods as we've had before. And you can have a shade. But right now the sun is great. It's actually not hot. You would think in August uh, 
here in Atlantic near Canary Islands is going to be hot. Actually, I just feel very well. It's very fresh. At night it gets kind of cold and I just enjoy the sun right now. It's not as hot as we thought. Things are getting better and better. I mean, we have less wind, but the smell, the burgers we're getting today. That's a nice spot for the burger. It has protection from the wind from this side, so it's kind of cool. Oh, it's looking good. So we have burgers, sauces, and we have three types of chips. This is gonna be good. And we have a little bit of uh, decoration, you know, just the meat to look nicer in the burger. Not supposed to necessarily eat it, it just, you know, so the burger looks nicer. We have these fancy winches in front, so you can just uh, press a button and it pops out. And you can use them for tensioning uh, mooring lines, or probably also for the, these sheets, you know, for the janaker or whatever. It's a pretty cool stuff. So it pops out, you can use it, and then just press another button and it's just gonna fold in. Never used it before, first time I've seen it. It might be a cool gadget, you know, like for tensioning or mooring lines. Could be a cool stuff. Not a cheap thing to have on a boat, you know, it's kind of fancy. There's another one here, uh, but uh, might be, you know, like practical. Another day goes by, we still have the same sail, the same direction, similar speed. Uh, we have 209 nautical miles left uh, to Gran Canaria, so we're actually getting there. Yeah, we're actually closer and closer, we started from Gibraltar. And we are doing some cool stuff, so we have a cake and we're making some chicken on this side. So life is good. We still have the same sail, so not much has changed. The sea has calmed down a little bit. I just like the sail, the shape, the color. Just feels good. The back view. The canaries are down there somewhere. We'll be there soon. Day number five, morning. We just passed uh, Lanzarote. So there's less than a day to Gran Canaria where we go. But we are here, Canary Islands. Kind of a spectacular view. You would expect Canary Islands in August to be warm. I'm actually kind of freezing right now. I should have long uh, shorts. The jacket, you would think it's hot here. Just look at the weather. So now in front of us there's gonna be Gran Canaria popping out very soon. We are approaching uh, Las Palmas, Gran Canaria. We can see all the lights, it's a very nice view. So we are right here in front of it, and this is the radar. So we have uh, seven miles left. Uh, we still have uh, quite good winds. We have 16 knots of wind speed, 12 apparent. It shifted a little bit and we're doing 8.7 knots, so coming in hot. So very soon we're going to furl this uh, Jenneker and find anchorage in here in Las Palmas next to the marina. It's not uh, the best to come in at night, but uh, we know this area, we've been here before, so it's a very easy approach. But it's actually very, very nice. These lights, it's so nice to come in at night. It's like a big Christmas tree. And this is Gran Canaria. It took us four and a half days uh, from uh, Gibraltar. And we covered 750 nautical miles. So that's a pretty good uh, timing. We're very fast. At the beginning, we we're just using an engine. Uh, so that's why this is even better. We could do it in four days with this boat. So it's a good uh, passage maker. Comfortable and uh, very fast. We 
we have a small squid on the net. It's not a flying fish this time, but it's a very tiny squid. Morning from Las Palmas, Gran Canaria. So this is this marina where everybody stays, and this is the anchorage where everybody stays when they come here, especially for the ARC, Atlantic Rally for cruisers. So it's basically a big port. There's a pier, so it's very sheltered, protected uh, from this wind here. Uh, it's kind of nice, but you know, it's a port, so it's not very romantic. And it's quite a big city here, it's busy. We are docked here in Marina Las Palmas. I would still like to test Ultramare, which is in this range, and some other catamarans, so hopefully in the next videos. Thank you for watching.